Hello everybody, I'm Dennis Prager. This is my home. It really is, it's not a set. Recently I mentioned that because people said, it's an interesting set you have. It's not, a, it's not a set. This is really where I do, in fact, almost all my work, at least when I'm home. I'm on the road a great deal speaking. And it's completely unrehearsed, completely. So this spontaneity is, is its one of its virtues. I just get to talk from my heart and my mind to you. You get to hear me. You get to ask questions. And it's a wonderful thing. And, and obviously, thank God, a lot of people feel that way. So wherever you are literally in the world, because people are watching everywhere, hi. Welcome to my home, my fireplace, and my dog, Otto. We have another dog, my wife and I, Snoopy. Snoopy, for whatever reason, is tired of hearing me speak and leaves as soon as I start talking. Otto, on the other hand, is not tired of my speaking because it puts him to sleep. And I, I work as a very effective sleeping pill for our bulldog. I am going to talk to you today about an issue that I hear, or a phrase that I hear constantly in... Uh, one of our two parties, it is constantly mentioned, the Democratic Party in America, but it's mentioned all over the world, where a people want a, a, a nationalized or socialized medical system. And the argument is, I remember seeing it on a, on a bus, an ad on a bus in Australia. So this is, it's pretty universal. Something to the effect, people shouldn't make money off of others' sickness. That's the thing, or, or as I hear it again, or people shouldn't profit from other people's illness. So almost like all of these phrases, they haven't been thought through. And I love clarity and I love serious thought. So let's think that through. People shouldn't profit from my illness from my being sick. So here's a really interesting question. Why not? <laughs> I would love to hear somebody's, because it's not right. People are making money off, off your being sick. But my answer to that is, that's the thing I most want them to make money from. Why is it great to make $20 million playing football, but not $20 million from conquering people's cancer? It's so bizarre to me. It's like it's upside down. I would love people to make money off getting me better. They're not, getting, they're not making money off of my sickness. They're making money off of getting me out of my sickness. It's not a true statement. If people really made money, well, Dennis Prager got sick. <laughs> That's another $100,000 for us. No, Dennis Prager got sick, so we'll get $100,000 to make him better. I think that's terrific. I want people to make money making me better and making you better and making your loved ones better. I can't think of a better way for people to make money. You're okay if people make money from pizza, <laughs> from football, from movies but not for making people better? Why is that not bizarre? I'll tell you why. Because people haven't thought it through. It's one of the most widely used lines that means nothing. We don't want people to profit off your sickness. I, 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 well, why don't we drop sickness? How about food? Would anybody say, well, you know, look, Folks, let's be honest, you need food even more than you need health care. It doesn't take long for you, it'll take a long time till most of you get really sick and die from that sickness. But it no, doesn't take long to starve to death. So we need food even more than we need health care. So why don't we just say, it is wrong for people to profit from food. Really? Isn't the fact that people profit from food the single biggest reason that there is less hunger today than at any time in the history of the human race? 
Why else do you think that is? Because people made money feeding others. And, of course, new farming techniques. I mean, a whole host of reasons, but it's all related to the farmer isn't going to use new farming techniques if he isn't paid, if he doesn't make a profit. Profit means being paid for. That's what profit means. You don't work if you don't make a profit. Correct? That's what it means. And you work harder, the bigger your profit. I, I've often said when I go to a hospital, and I've had a number of back surgeries, and I'm, and I'm fine, and I, I, I bless these surgeons, and I, I hope they made a lot of money because they, they work very, very hard. It's very hard to perform surgery, and it takes a long time of investment in your life to learn how to be a surgeon. What would you prefer, that people did it from the goodness of their hearts? Isn't that a little, uh, a little unrealistic? People are going to go are going to go to medical school and, and university for ten years, fifteen years, work work incredibly hard, and and then get get as much as uh, as a as a milk delivery service for for their work. Is is that is that a is that a realistic vision? I care about more than anything else in the, in the world. I care about increasing goodness on Earth. That's my preoccupation ever since I was in high school. I wrote it in my diary in high school. That's what animates me, increasing goodness. So the, the question is, I, I, I've never worked on the question of how do you increase people's uh, good heart. I, I am interested in people's good deeds. Good hearts have led to a lot of bad deeds. And selfish hearts have often led to good deeds. Let's say, that, let's, say, let's say out there there are people who want to win a, a Nobel Prize in medicine for conquering pancreatic cancer. And the major reason they're working day and night to find a cure for pancreatic cancer is they want the Nobel Prize in, for, for medicine. Do I care? I'm thrilled there's a Nobel Prize for medicine then. Because then... I or loved ones or you won't die of pancreatic cancer. That's a great thing. That's what matters. Increasing goodness. Not romantic visions of the human heart. It's not, it's not particularly significant when it comes to increasing goodness. So back to our thing, making profit off people's sickness. No, they're making profit off people's wellness. That's how people make money, by getting you well. If there were a hospital known for 50% of the people entering drop dead within a week, it would close, right? The hospital that will make the most money, theoretically, is just like anything else. They did the best job. What does the best job mean in healthcare? The best job means cured the most people. Isn't that wonderful? Or it's, it's like, I, I hear, I, another thing I hear, it's just these romantic notions. <clears throat> by romantic, by the way, I don't mean loving. Romantic, I mean unrealistic, sounds nice. Oh, uh, for example, oh, uh, this guy, he, he, he gave $10 million so that this hospital I is just uh, named after him. And I'm thinking, okay, that's fine with me. Because if I have to go to a hospital, I'll bless this guy. What, what, what do I care if the guy... The guy, let's, say the, let's say somebody said, I will only give 10, 20, 30, 100 million dollars for this hospital if my name goes on the building. What would you say? I'm sorry, sir. You have to give it for purely idealistic reasons, not for a desire to have your name known. We are not going to take that money. If, there is not one of you watching that would ever say that. Right? And of course not. If that's the condition of this guy helping so many people, bravo, I'll put his name in gigantic neon lights. What do I care? It's helping more people. But again, I go back to the food issue. Why don't we apply the exact same thing? If, if, if health care should be nationalized and free for everyone, why shouldn't food? Why should we have to pay for food? If we don't have to pay for health care, and of course we pay for it, it's called taxes, but if we don't have to pay for health care, why should we have to pay for food? I never got an answer. I mean, these are not questions I'm coming up with right now. I have done a talk show for 35 years. I have talked to people who don't agree with me a good chunk of my life. 
So these ideas are the product of a lot of interaction with people who don't agree with me. And I never got an answer. Why should people not get food free? Because you and I know what will happen. Food will deteriorate. That's why. Because people won't work nearly as hard to produce excellent food. And you won't have supermarkets like we have in the Western world, which are staggering. Unbelievable in, in, uh, in, in, inventions. If somebody from 100 years ago, let alone 500 years ago, or 1,000, or 1,500, or 2,000, came into a Western supermarket, they would faint. They would think they had died and gone to heaven. In, in a supermarket where I live, you can get uh, blueberries all year. Because if you don't get the blueberries from where you live, in, in my case, Western United States, where we do have blueberries... Uh, but they don't grow all year, so we get the blueberries from Chile in South America. Do you now? How think about that? How did blueberries from Chile get to my supermarket two minutes from my house in Los Angeles, California, USA? How did that happen? Somebody had to make money growing the blueberries. Somebody had to make money picking the blueberries. Somebody had to make money packing the blueberries. Somebody had to make money shipping the blueberries. Somebody had to make money delivering the blueberries from the ship or the airplane. Somebody had to make money selling the blueberries in a supermarket. It's astonishing it doesn't cost $1,000 for a box of blueberries. But everyone in the involved in it had to make money. I can then eat a very nice, healthy fruit. Berries are quite good for you with their antioxidants. I can eat blueberries 12 months a year as a result of that. Solely because people made profits. If blueberries were nationalized, it wouldn't happen. Because there's no incentive. People need incentives to work hard. And, and, and correctly so. My first job in my life, I was about, oh, I don't know, I guess 14 years old, shoveling snow. I grew up in a cold climate in New York City, and I shoveled snow. You know why I shoveled people's snow? Because they paid me. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it was an incentive. Look at all this money I'll get for shoveling snow, and then I could buy whatever I want. Because I didn't get a very big allowance at the time from my parents, which is a good thing. Because if my parents gave me a big allowance, I wouldn't have shoveled snow. That's, a, that's another thing, by the way. That's why benefits make people lazy. Of course they do. They would have made me lazy. If my father gave me the equivalent of shoveling snow money, then I wouldn't have shoveled snow. I already have the money. Why should I work so hard? And it is hard to shovel snow. For those of you in warm climates, snow weighs a lot. Believe me, and when you pick a shovel, one shovel full of it, you'll know. This is real life. This is not make-believe stuff. Of course you're going to have more excellence. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have safety nets in health, just like we have safety nets in food. We should have safety nets. For the, 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 that handful of people, at least in our cultures, in, in, in the developed cultures, that cannot afford a meal, that's a very small number of people, but where they exist, of course we help them out. With food banks, and, and by the way, ideally they should be helped by fellow citizens, by churches, synagogues, uh, clubs, uh, food banks, food for the poor, and so on. I mean, that's the ideal. I think the last should be the government because it's one-to-one -one when it's done in a private charity. And that's a, that's a much bigger difference when somebody gives you food than the state gives you food. So all of this argues tremendously morally. I'm talking morally here. I'm not talking about po politics. This is not politics. This is morality. People make money from doing good is a wonderful thing. It's astonishing to me that people are at peace with people making money for doing nothing. I mean, it's, it's fun. I have no problem, by the way, with football players making $10 million. None, I have none whatsoever. That's what's called a free market. If people want to pay a lot to watch sports people, athletes play, they should be allowed to, and that's fine. 
But, I mean, let's be honest, nobody in his right mind thinks football players do for society what surgeons do, or for that matter, what the guy who plants blueberries does. The blueberry planter in Chile does a lot more for the world than any football player living. But we have no problem with the football player making money, but we have a big problem with the person who, uh, who provides surgery. Or the pharmaceutical companies. That's, that's really mind-blowing. Everyone I know, not everyone, uh, a lot of people I know, I'm, I, want to be, I always like to be precise, many people I know, and, ev- and there is no one watching. There is n- I don't care where you are on earth or what your age is. Every one of you has people in your life who are alive thanks to drug companies, research and development budgets of billions of dollars over, over time. Why did they spend all of that money to figure out what sort of drug to produce for diabetes or, or for a form of chemotherapy against cancer or against pneumonia or what have you. Why? Because they ha- there was a profit in it. That's why. Wow, if we come up with a cure for X, Y, or Z disease, we're going to make a lot of money. That's right. You're darn tootin' you will, and that's great. I want you to make a lot of money because that's the greatest incentive that's what incentivizes places to spend vast uh, sums of money to research and develop drugs that will heal millions, hundreds of millions of people. Do, do they engage in practices that are often unsavory or whatever? Of course they do. The human condition is very, very complex. But the sum total of, of, of the profit-based drug industry is that hundreds of millions of people lived longer than they would have without those drugs, lived in far less pain thanks to those drugs. But, oh, let's nationalize it. Let's, let's, uh, let's pay the price that we want to pay. Yeah, if you pay the price you want to pay, that is US, the government, then the, then the drug company doesn't make the, the money that it needs to have a profit to find another cure in the form of a, of a drug. So the next time you hear, ooh, people are uh, profit, profiteering, that's the term they used in a recent Democratic Party debate in the United States. People are profiteering from people's sickness. No, they're profiteering from making people well. That's a good thing. All righty, time for your questions. They're on their way. It's on their way. All righty. Okay. All right. You know what? I, that's a great. What? How much time did I just take up? Eighteen. Well, we have time. So let's see. Okay. Here's an issue. David, twenty-three, in Los Angeles. Hi, Dave. What are three things you cannot live without? So. I have to be completely uh, uh, open here. When I say that this is completely unrehearsed, it's true, except that I do see some of the questions in in advance. Because sometimes I I think, uh, it's not a question that will be general, so I have to choose. But I don't think up my answers. Uh, But I I heard of this, and then I thought for a minute, three things I cannot live without is an interesting question. By the way, I never thought of it, believe it or not. It's like when people say, I get this a lot from callers to my radio show. So name three people. If you could have dinner with three people who ever lived in history, who would they be? And I never think about that except when somebody calls me on the radio for it. And then they think there's something wrong with me because I don't have an immediate answer. And, uh, and the truth is, I don't have an immediate, I don't even have a non-immediate answer. I don't know, who do I want to have dinner with? I feel, I feel like I know a lot of these people. I think I I feel like I know Churchill. I feel like I know Moses. Uh, So would I like dinner with them? Yeah, but it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't preoccupy me for whatever. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I'd rather have dinner with my best friends. (laughs) To be honest, I've never been a celebrity fan uh, or famous person fan. 
I love having I love having meals with my friends and my wife and my kids. Uh, to be honest, th that's really uh, that's a big high for me. So anyway, three things I can't live without. Uh, and we're obviously not talking physically, right? We can't live without oxygen and nitrogen and food. So three things I can't live without. The the uh, it would be very it would be extremely hard for me to live without friends and my wife. I'm a people person. By the way, my motto on this, which I probably should talk about another time, because this is really going to provoke reaction. I have I have contempt for humanity, and I love people. Okay, that's that's my. It's always been my always been my view. Uh, anyway, so I, I am a people person, and I and I uh, friends and my wife. Uh, it's hard for me to imagine living without them. That that's the first thing. I mean, and God, uh, if if I if somehow I woke up convinced there was no God, uh, I would of course understand because I'm very intellectual and rational. I would understand that uh oh, if there is no God, everything's a coincidence. That means there's no meaning. There's ultimately no meaning to, to this existence. It's a fluke just happened on one planet at one time in history it's a fluke we die and for eternity we're oblivion we're nothing ah uh, that would bother me i would like i would like to believe there's something beyond this and that i will be reconnected with the people i love so god is a uh, also i want god to exist because i want i want there to be ultimate justice I want the really bad to be punished, and I want the really good to be rewarded. And if you don't feel that way, there's something wrong with you. You really don't want the really bad punished, and you don't want the really good rewarded? Well, I don't have to defend my wanting that. You have to defend why you wouldn't want that. So God is, is clearly uh, a, uh, a... would be up there. Things I can't live without... But I have a feeling that the question is about m less lofty things. So, but I I'm, I'm, a, I'm somewhat of a literalist because I like precision. So I gave you the, the, the truest answer that I could think of. However, having said that, there were things that uh, it would be hard for me to live without. It would be hard for me to live without uh, uh, classical music. I would, I, I would, I can't say just music. I, I like a lot of types of music, but I have, I fell in love with classical music in high school. I conduct orchestras periodically. I am crazy about it. It touches my, it touches the two most powerful things, my mind and my heart. Very often I have tears at the end of a great symphony. I'm amazed myself that I have tears. I get chills, I get tears. There are times I've attended classical music concerts, and at the end, I, I, I couldn't even applaud. I was sort of paralyzed by the emotional power of what, I, what just happened. And I admit that some of us are built this way and some are not. I have a very close friend since high school. He's a very deep person, very deep, very wonderful person. Uh, to him, classical music is, a, is sort of background noise. And, and to me, I'm getting chills and, and tears well up in my... So I understand it's somewhat built in. But anyway, I'm answering you. That would be something it would be hard for me uh, to, uh, to live without. That's why I think every kid at some point asks, well, would you rather be blind or, or deaf? Right? It's sort of high school question. It's not a stupid question. It's really asking, what do you think is more important, sight or, or, or hearing? Sight is, of course, more important to get along on a daily basis because you, know, you, you know you, otherwise you bump into things and you, there's a lot you can't do on the other hand without without hearing how do you communicate and communication is everything talking to people getting getting their feedback and of course hearing music it's a very tough call i feel for people in both cases who can't see or can't hear but I have a lot of uh, blind people who listen to my radio show because obviously they just have to hear it. And they, they call up and tell me they, they lead a, a very productive life, and they do. 
obviously I don't get to talk to deaf people. I had a deaf grandmother. She read my lips. She was amazing. She could read your lips from the other side of the room. You really did have to be careful what you said. But, but it, I, I saw how it isolated her. It's a very painful, it's a very painful thing. How are we doing on time? 25. Oh, good. You didn't give a third thing. I didn't give a third thing. Because I'm not trying to give a third thing. The other one was God and, and friends. And so I didn't. All right, so cigars, yeah. So cigars, it's a real love in my life. I admit it. It's a joy. I'm not addicted. People know you're addicted. Like, they, they don't even know anything about cigars. If, nobody's addicted to cigars. Because... We don't inhale, so you, the nicotine is not the element. The reason people like cigars is for the taste. I like the taste of tobacco. I don't like cigarettes. People, people don't smoke cigarettes for tobacco. They smoke cigarettes for nicotine. But they get a lot of junk with it, like tar. So I'm sure if somebody would remind me, I could come up with others. But that, that I'll leave it at that. Okay, let's see. Finally, I know this one from Norway I've been waiting to answer. Julie, 23 in Norway. By the way, my first visit to Norway, I was in my 20s. I had no money. So how did I go up the Norwegian coast? I went, I went from, I think from Bergen, all the way up to Nordkap, the very top of Norway in the Arctic, oh, past the Arctic. I went on a mail boat. It, it was delivering U.S. mail. U.S. Because that's silly. It was delivering Norwegian mail. And uh, <laughs> I had so little money, I slept in the bar. Night after night, I would sleep on the floor in the bar. And it was one of the great trips of my life. Got off at the top of Norway, went around to Finland, took the Finnish railway down. I actually saw reindeer in the wild. In fact, I was chased by a male reindeer because I took a picture of him mating with his wife or girlfriend. I'm not, I don't know if they were married. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't like my intrusion. And I'll never forget, people were laughing themselves silly watching this American kid running away from a reindeer. <laughs> it's one of the sights I wish I had a video of, but we didn't have cell phones then to take video of everything happening. Anyway, that was my first trip to Norway. I've been there quite a number of times. Here comes a question all the way from the cold north, Dennis. You speak about kids not wanting anything to do with their parents for silly and valid reasons, and I agree. But what about parents not wanting anything to do with their kids for silly and valid reasons? In Norway, it seems to be an issue of fathers just leaving their wife and children, capitalized and, meaning that they just pack their bags and get a divorce, but abandon their children, leaving them at their mom's care as they start over with someone else. Any thoughts on that? There's not much to say. It's so, I so, I, I could, this is what I'll say. Uh, this is hardly unique to Norway, unfortunately. Fathers, uh, and sometimes mothers, more fathers, who just move on, as it were, and, uh, and just stop contact with their kids and make a new family or just want a new life I don't get it I have no explanation it is like telling me that somebody uh, w w would like to uh, uh, collect bee stings <laughs> uh, it, it makes no sense to me I'm a father I mean it, it is so beyond my understanding I can I get bad things. I, I understand it. I, I, I have a human nature that's as flawed as everybody else's. So I understand bad behavior. I don't understand that behavior. How do you love your kids and then say bye-bye on your own? I, I don't have an answer for you. It, it's, it's a form of narcissism that I, I find inscrutable. It can't, I can't explain it. So there's, I can't give you much, much uh, intelligent reaction. I, it, it makes no sense to me. Far more common, I think, in the United States is kids stopping speaking to parents. Now I have a lot of thoughts on. But this one uh, makes, it, it truly makes no sense. The human, uh, the human species is complex. <laughs> That's all I can say. The, 
the natural love of your children that I think built into most people this seems to violate one of the most basic instincts of the human being is loving your children so I don't I don't know it would be very interesting I I wish I could interview them as bizarre as that sounds I wouldn't give them a hard time I would just I would just want to understand how could you do this I, I did you love your children before you abandoned them now if they say no well then at least I'll understand they don't love children even their own but it's hard to imagine. Even that's hard to imagine. Anyway, I, wonder, I don't know how common it is. It's an interesting question. How common is it now versus, let's say, 50 years ago, 100 years ago? And I don't have an answer to that. All right, my friends. Another intense and fun fireside chat. These mean a lot to me. That's why I do, do them every week. I have a very, very wonderfully blessed, busy, busy life. But I, I just do everything possible not to miss this. So I just want to remind you that you could watch any of the fireside chats and they, it will be relevant. It doesn't have to be recent. I talk about big issues almost in every case. So it doesn't matter when you listen. And share them with others, because I, I would like to double the number of people watching. There's no money in it for me. It's not, for those of you who worry about profits, I make no money on the fireside chat. <laughs> Just for the record. Uh, I do it because I want to touch people's lives. So if you can forward this to others, that's a great thing, I think, because it's important subjects that are being discussed. Thank you for being with me. Until next week, bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep these fireside chats free, please do by donating to PragerU.